Chapter 9 Satsuki walked slowly, tucking the paper into her pocket, and hesitantly, Sakura walked behind. The silence permeated the air. So, Satsuki-san, Sakura said, hands fumbling behind her back. What are you going to do? Satsuki walked, not sparing Sakura a glance. Isn't it obvious? Sakura's stomach dropped. I knew it. Well, uh, Sakura said, fiddling with her hair. I, I don't really have any idea what we're, you know, up against. It doesn't matter, Satsuki said. We're strong enough, and there's no point doing these Dirank missions anymore. I have to become stronger. Stronger. Sakura repeated. To kill, a certain man. That thing you said, the girl said, fidgeting with an awkward smile as she avoided Satsuki's gaze. Killing, is, so. We aren't children any. More, Satsuki said. Yeah, you're right. Sakura walked slowly behind Satsuki, searching for words, until they came to a crossroads, and wordlessly, without even a pathetic goodbye, Sakura diverged path Sakura. She turned, and Satsuki had walked no further, turning her head to the side to look at Sakura. Do you want to train with me? Sakura's mouth opened and closed like a fish, and she blinked. What a, she stuttered, like, now. Satsuki raised an eyebrow. Sakura wondered whether she'd heard her right. Oh uh, yeah, sure, ah, uh, lead the way. Oh, so this is where you train. The clearing wasn't perfectly spacious, but Sakura supposed that was a more realistic scenario anyway. She disguised a stumble over a tree root as a strangely footed spin. Satsuki walked ahead of her. Free. From distractions, Satsuki said, walking to the middle of the grounds. Her body morphed into something snake-like in its grace, and a shiver ran up Sakura's spine. Satsuki met her eyes. Come at me. Sakura hesitated for a moment, unsure in her words and her movements, until she remembered the weakness in thoughts like that, perhaps, in that moment, she'd be dead, and she ran at Satsuki fists. Flying. With a single, well-timed push, Sakura was sent flying into the ground, chin first, and her eyes stung with tears. Try again. Sakura stood up, running forward, only to be elbowed in the back and sent crumpling to her knees. The humiliation came once, twice, thrice more, until Satsuki gave her a cold look that made Sakura feel like curling up on herself and disappearing. This was a mistake. Sakura felt tears threatening to spill at the edges of her eyes. What was? Satsuki looked down on her, turning on the balls of her feet, but with a cold, empty look over her shoulder before she did. Trying to train a mediocre kunoichi like you. Mediocre. Sakura's heart fell to her feet. Sure. I'm pretty weak and pathetic, but... Am I really? Satsuki's feet padded softly on the grass, the sound becoming more distant with every step. Sakura gritted her teeth. Shan narrow? Mediocre. And for the life of her, Satsuki had not, not one bit, expected the fist that came hurtling towards her jaw. So, really, no one could blame her when she dumbly let it hit her, and lay on the ground with spinning vision and a tang in her mouth. And even with the taste of blood on her tongue, stars in her eyes, and a resounding ringing in her head, nothing could stop Satsuki from smiling at Sakura. You hit hard, Satsuki said, a smile curling the edges of her lips. Let's go again. The straight down burn of midday sun beamed down on Naruto. His knuckles stung from the grazes and splinters, a sticky half pus half blood mess stringing the gaps between his fingers. It was the result of what he'd called training, but what was closer to angrily punching a post. Naruto arrived at the gates. Although he'd promised himself and Mizuki he would not return here, he figured that the Chuyunin exams qualified as a special occasion. He found the grave, and knelt down gently. Taro Mizuki the name stirred the noise of wheezing lungs, the feeling of clumped tissue resting on his lips, the strike of demonic lightning Naruto calmed his breath. The Chuyunin exam entry forms lay below him, held down in the light breeze beneath his knees. Chuyunin. The title that would bring him a step closer to Hokage, to better missions, to respect from the villagers, to, supposedly, all that he'd ever wanted. Naruto leaned forwards, resting his forehead on the top of the grave, his breath misting. Along the reflective stone, the tuft of dandelions from so long ago had sprouted, from its seeds, tens of plants, all letting free waves of fluffy white in the gusts of wind. The Chuyunin exam form pinned below his knees rustled in the breeze. Naruto closed his eyes. The gravestone was cold on his forehead. Who is Orikimaru? Satsuki awoke with a vision of tears fresh in her mind. She checked. The time, 
it was three o'clock, and settled back into sleep. When she awoke handily at six in the morning, the image of Itaka's tears had imprinted themselves onto Satsuki's eyes. She turned the light on, seeing the uncanny red of her sherry non in uncomfortable clarity. Those tears, wherever she looked, they followed her. That image, pervading image, of Itaki, walking away, with that same, sherry non, the same blood-stained hands, all so similar, and yet, had she seen this before? The single, lone tear, that slipped down his cheek, was something Satsuki instinctively rejected. She traced her image in that mirror, the soft curve of her jawline, so different from Itake, those eyes, so different from Itake, that dull black hair, so different from Itake, because Satsuki was different from Itake in every single way he couldn't have been crying Satsuki squeezed her eyes shut, attempting to will away her sherry non and the burning image of lies that it lay on the inside of her eyelids. But, her sherry non wouldn't even deactivate, that was no good. But, what if, Satsuki's stomach convulsed at the unbidden thought. The idea of her brother crying, of the vile and disgusting man who she loathed to share blood with, daring to shed tears at the vicious slaughter he laid upon her, their family, the idea alone made Satsuki wretch. But, what if Itaka was, murderer, S rank missing Nin, Uchiha Itake, the man who would surely, certainly die by her hands, was the furthest creature from regret and tears. But, what if Itaka was maybe, just maybe, Satsuki? Vomited. But what if Itaka was innocent? Satsuki, bile dripping from her lips, slammed her hand into the bathroom mirror with colossal force. Tiny shards rained on her bare feet, blood running in organized streams down the tiles of her bathroom. Tears fell. When Sakura and Naruto also turned up to hand in their forms for the Chuyunin exams, Satsuki couldn't help but feel relieved. You think? You can become a Chuyunin, Satsuki said, smirking at Naruto, and to her relief, the boy flared up like an agitated firecracker. Hell yeah I can. I'm not sure about you, you bastard. Come on, you two. This is an important time, you know. And even through the dull stinging of her palm from the morning, Satsuki felt immersed in familiarity. This feeling, these two. Yeah, well, she started. It. Bastard. That's not even the right insult, you idiot. Satsuki tucked her hands in her pockets. They're, precious to me. And. What is the right insult for a bastard like her, anyways? You could just not say anything. The painful image of Naruto's blank, dead expression sliced into her you just don't get it. I, I don't care whether you asked. Satsuki clenched her fists. I can't. Lose anything that precious to me ever again. Itaki, you killed everyone I ever loved. Satsuki closed her eyes, the faint and familiar bickering between Sakura and Naruto distant and warm. And now, I'm unsure why you did what you did, but, it doesn't matter to me anymore. But Sakura-chan dash. Just stop, you idiot. You're making a scene. But you just called me an idiot. That's dash? That's. Different, okay. Naruto. Sakura, they're too important to me. I won't let you keep me isolated any longer. I will protect them, and that, that is a promise. Naruto, Sakura, Satsuki said, and the two stilled. Eh, let's go, she said, smirking at the two of them. Naruto grinned widely back, and Sakura smiled brightly. Yeah, typical Kanahinin. Cowards. What did you just say? Sakura. Planted a hand firmly onto Naruto's forearm, eye twitching but giving him a warning glance. Naruto, they aren't worth a fight, she bit out through gritted teeth. Cowards. Naruto fumed, lunging forward in Sakura's grip. I'll show them coward dash. You're from Suna, Satsuki said, stepping forward with a hand resting on her fans. Who are you to call us cowards? I'd like to see you in a fight. The boy smeared in face paint smirked. Go ahead. The room perked up, ninja peering over at those who'd managed to instantly start a fight. The air instantly became alive with rowdy mumbling. To Mary. Kankura. The two sand nin froze up. Gara, Tamari said, her words slipping from her lips as though she were shivering. We were just dash shut up, or I'll kill you after I kill these, the boy, said, unmoving. Satsuki was momentarily mesmerized by the swirling movement of sand. Naruto. The sand went from a harmless beauty to a condensed fist in a split second, clasping Naruto's throat and tightening, lifting him legs sprawling into the air as he clawed uselessly at the iron grip. Sakura turned on Gara, running for him with an expression of fury a solid mound of sand cum rock slammed into her gut, 
sending her hurtling backwards into Satsuki and then sending the both of them hurtling through an empty table. Tamari turned to Gara, an expression of worry, fear, twisting her features as she tried to reason with him. Gara, you know what father said dash what an unyouthful display. The flying green kick was one that Gara's sand only just caught, the entirety of Gara's sand. Pulling towards the point of collision, Naruto collapsed to the floor, Satsuki unpicking herself from the splintered wood to run to his heaving form. Naruto dash. The boy donned in an adventurous green outfit held the attention of almost everyone, as he stared down Gara without a single shred of fear. His fingers goaded Gara forward, his expression unforgiving. I, Rock Lee, shall be your opponent. Sorry, but I don't think so, eh? Booming voice said, tone dripping with sarcasm. Everyone turned to see a man with a cut jaw and a grin made of sadistic intent. I'm Marino Ibiki, and I'll be your examiner for the written test. The exam progressed with Naruto getting progressively more anxious with every question, Sakura getting more anxious with every time Naruto looked blankly at his paper, and Satsuki cheating shamelessly all throughout. By the end, Naruto had decided to bank everything on the final question, and when it came, his heart shook his ribs like a taiko drum. Now, let me tell you about the rules unique to question 10. The first one is, you may choose whether to do this question or not. But, should you choose not to, you get a score of zero. In other words, you and your teammates fail. The room hummed with confused conversation and anxious anticipation until Ibiki spoke again. Let me finish. However, should you choose to receive the 10th question and answer the question wrong, Satsuki's grip on her pencil tightened. You will not be able to take the Chuyunin exams ever again. The uproar amongst the candidates was a dull rushing noise in Satsuki's head. That sort of rule is that even Aloud, Satsuki felt her heart pounding in her chest, and she looked to her teammates. Naruto's shoulders were shaking, his head looking to the desk, and Sakura was staring at him, hand tentatively reaching upwards. Ha! Marino Ibiki gave Satsuki a skeptical look. The title of Genin can't hold me back more than the title of Chuyunin can push me forward, Satsuki said, staring Ibiki in the eyes. I'll become stronger no matter what you say. So give up this charade and ask us the tenth question. The room stilled, Sakura's hand lowering limply to the table, and Naruto turning around to look at her with an incredulous look in his eyes. Ibiki raised an eyebrow. The rapid flow of candidates out of the exam room stopped, and the panic simmered down to leave only an electric tension. Unsure gazes had become certain, hands folded and looking straight at Ibiki. It was time. Well, Ibiki said, lip twitching with the beginnings of a smirk. If that's the last of you, then. Team 7 simultaneously stiffened. Everyone in this room passes. Chapter 10 Satsuki couldn't help but feel slightly overwhelmed at the sheer height of the trees before her. They stretched far higher than anything in the village, and the wire walls alone made her uneasy with the warnings wired onto them. The canopy of the thick trunked trees was so thick that it may as well have been a ceiling. 44th Training Ground 4, Naruto said, face dropping. Too many fours, we're going to die. Satsuki rolled her eyes, and hit Naruto gently on the back of the head. Shut up, idiot. Pff, don't. Tell me the name Forest of Death doesn't make you a little scared. Sakura huffed. You two had better not argue, she said. I won't be able to deal with five days of your bickering. Satsuki's just trying to be a hard ass. Naruto said, but it didn't take much to see that he was trying to reassure himself more than anyone else. It does look scary. Right, Sakura-chan. I don't know about that. Sakura-chan too. Well, uh, I was just testing you to see if you'd agree. Nothing about this is scary, not after that guy we had for the written test. He was scarier. I'm Uzumaki Naruto, I can take this. Naruto was a bad liar at best, but this was possibly some of his worst work. He wasn't good at going into his own bathroom at night, let alone a large forest filled with poisonous, oversized, and carnivorous organisms. We've got a scroll of earth, Satsuki said. When we go in, we've got to get a scroll of heaven as soon as possible. Naruto waited for the true meat of Satsuki's plan to shine through. And then we run. His stomach dropped. Is that our plan, he said, the hesitation in his voice showing. Do you have a better one, Naruto? Sakura said warningly, folding her arms. Naruto looked at the colossal trees, huge gates, and heard the worryingly loud tapping of a centipede's legs. Ah, uh, no he said. Sounds good. The three of them ran like there was a demon hot on their heels. 
Although Sakura had been informed of the oversized animals and worryingly high fatality rate in the forest of death, nothing prepared her for the sight of a skull peeking out from underneath the trunk of a tree. Her breath quickened, her palms sweating, and Sakura swallowed nervously as they ran forward. Don't think about it. Gotta move, Sakura. Can't think. Move. Don't think. Move. They jumped from tree to tree, scroll safe in Satsuki's pocket, hands and feet and bodies pushing off with strength and energy from every branch they hit, until, after half an hour, Sakura spoke. If we carry on like this, she said, heaving for breath, I'll be exhausted. Satsuki nodded. Let's stop and plan for a moment. Although they stopped in a small clearing to relax, Sakura was very aware of how on end Satsuki appeared to be, her eyes scanned the surroundings quickly, calculating before she spoke. Naruto shrugged. We haven't seen anyone yet, he said. That's good, right? Neither of them responded immediately, with Satsuki looking anxious before she spoke. Her eyes flitted to the dark of the wood that light could not penetrate. We should make a password dash she began. The ears of Team 7 prickled up. What's that? Sakura whispered, when with a mighty kick and dive, Naruto pushed her out of the way. Satsuki jumped backwards. With a deafening crunch of branches, a colossal snake divided Team 7. I'll distract him. Satsuki yelled over the hissing of the serpent. You two get to higher ground? There might be enemies. Naruto's heart sank, and he yelled over his shoulder. You better get your ass back here soon, Satsuki. With that, Satsuki lured the snake, which even the mere image of made Naruto metaphorically quake in his boots, deeper in the forest. I'm back. Satsuki's voice rang out through the forest, and Naruto and Sakura turned. She emerged from the leaf canopy, dirty from a scuffle. Satsuki-san, Sakura said, smiling with relief. Are you alright? You look a bit. Nothing much, Satsuki said. Just a bit of a challenge. So what's our next move? Naruto twitched, eyeing Satsuki suspiciously. Naruto-san, Satsuki said, and the moment the honorific slipped past his lips, she knew her mistake. She barely dodged the kunao that sailed toward her head. You little genin are far more intuitive than I thought, Satsuki said, and the way her voice was filled with slippery malice made Naruto's hair stand on end. With a puff, the transformation faded, and left behind a woman with a wet grin. You, Naruto said, thinking hard. Wait you're the one who caught the kunao the examiner threw. So sharp, she said, smiling unpleasantly. My name is Orokimaru. Naruto's heart froze in his chest, and in spite of the fear that made his bones quiver, he hauled himself to his feet. Orokimaru, he breathed. You, you're Orokimaru. Sakura whipped her head around to look at Naruto, eyes wide. Naruto, you know this guy. Naruto, with trembling knees and shaking hands, stood forward. Sakura stared at him, the sheer insanity that Naruto was even able to stand before this man shaking her to the very core. Taro Mizuki, Naruto said, his voice a shaky yell. His tone was desperate. You remember him, right? Sakura's eyes widened, and Orokimaru's smirk widened behind his corpse white fingers. Oh, that one, he said, cold yellow. Eyes vicious. That weakling didn't even manage to make it to me. Failures like that are simply worthless. Weakling. Naruto whispered. Failures. Sakura gritted her teeth, feeling the reality of the situation bearing down on her. Naruto couldn't shoot his mouth off, not now. Mizuki-sensei. Mizuki-sensei died for you? A weakling? A failure? Mizuki-sensei wouldn't have failed to get to you if it wasn't for me? He stayed behind for me. Orokimaru didn't do anything except allow a curl of the lip, and Sakura felt a heavy weight settle in her stomach at how his eyes traced Naruto's every move and that he is why he is dead. That is weak, Orokimaru hissed. Someone who allows themselves to be tied down by bonds can never ascend to true power. Naruto was quiet, closing his eyes, and. For a moment, Orokimaru thought the boy had cracked. He opened his eyes. You're wrong, Naruto said, his expression defiant. You're wrong? Someone like Mizuki-sensei, with the courage to risk their life for my happiness, understands strength far more than someone like you. Orokimaru was quiet for a moment, before his lips curled upwards. To Sakura's silent horror, he began to cackle, hysteria. Rising before he began roaring with laughter. Kukuka, he 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 he, aha aha ha ha. A wave of killing intent hit the two of them, and Naruto felt, instantaneously, 
what it felt like to die beneath an opponent far stronger than him. Sakura vomited. Orikimura's laughing mellowed out to a low chuckle, and he moved towards them slowly, steps echoing through the quiet of the clearing. Even through the overwhelming fear, Naruto had the sense to glare at him, stepping back with awkwardly stiff legs that refused to move. Hatred like yours, Orikimura said, the S sliding past his lips like venom, is just ripe for the picking. And with that, he lunged. Naruto grabbed Sakura, jumping up to higher ground. Sakura-chan, he said urgently, grabbing her by the shoulders. Come on, we've gotta find. Satsuki, we need to get past this guy. Sakura shook her head, shaking violently in Naruto's hold. Naruto, he's out of our league, she said, voice quivering. We're already dead. Once you give up, that's when you're already dead. Get it together? If you stand up now, we might just make it out of here alive. Sakura looked up at him, Naruto, dead last, telling her to get her shit together, and instantly, completely, knew that she had to stand up. She closed her eyes, taking a deep and shuddering breath. Shan Nero, if I got this damn far, I'm not gonna get taken out now. Sakura pulled herself to her feet. You're right, she said. But we've got to hope Satsuki will manage alone. If we focusing on going after her, Orikimaru will just kill us from behind. If she's trusting us to manage here, then we've got to trust her. 2. Achiha Satsuki, Orikimaru said, the grating tone of his voice echoing from every tree. The Achiha with those blessed eyes. Naruto was seconds away from retaliating bitingly when Sakura slapped her hand firmly over his mouth. He gritted his teeth desperately trying not to respond to the goading comment. I have a plan, she whispered. So listen carefully. Shan Nero. Sakura came. Sprinting down the tree bark, and threw a kunao directly down. Her running speed, along with the force of her throw and gravity, allowed her kunao to soar forward. Orikimaru was barely fast enough, a clump of his hair floating down to the branch as he jumped backwards. Is that boy too cowardly to even face me? Orikimaru sneered tongue snaking about his lips. How pathetic. Meanwhile that. Achiha girl is fighting for her life, that, or she's already dead. Shut up. And Naruto's leg came crashing down onto the branch where Orikimaru had stood milliseconds before. He looked at Sakura, and she nodded. Sakura ran to Orikimaru's left side, Kunao wielded close to her body. The man lunged for her, and in an instant she was replaced with a log, coming for him further to the left. Orikimaru read her obvious movements as the kunao sliced through the air towards him and then abruptly her leg made strong contact with the back of Orikimaru's knee. Satsuki's voice from their training rang in her head. Feign your movements. People may take you lightly because you're a girl, and they'll fall for it. Take advantage of that. Show them what you're really made of. Although the hit wasn't nearly the strongest Orikimaru had felt or even seen, it was surprising, unexpected. His balance shaking for a moment Sakura and Naruto jumped, and the branch blew up in a flurry of red. They landed on the branch above, waiting for the explosive smoke to clear, and Naruto smiled at Sakura. Nice job, he said, and she nodded, breathing heavily more from adrenaline than the fight. Itself. The smoke cleared Naruto's shadow clones had done a fine job, planting explosive tags beneath the branch they had been stood on whilst Sakura distracted him. It had been nicely done and Naruto had come along from the other direction, shepherding Orikimaru carefully, until Sakura's foot connected. He couldn't say he was sure this man was dead, not with how above them he seemed, but, surely, even slightly, he'd be incapacitated oh ho ho. Naruto and Sakura's eyes widened at the sight that met them. The man's flesh had been burned and melted altogether, but whereas Naruto had expected to see raw red skin, it was nothing like it, the flesh, like thin white paper was singed and burned and was peeling away to reveal a fresh layer. You children are just so interesting, Orikimura. Smirked, and with a flourish, he tore the rest of his face away. Sakura shrieked, and in spite of a moment of intense fear, Naruto cried out. In an imperfect unison, Kunao rained down on Orikimura. The first Kunao he met with deflected from his forehead protector, slicing a clear line through it, and the second he caught in his teeth. The third he caught between his little finger and ring finger. The fourth he deflected with the handle of the third, the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth passed by in such a flurry of delicate movement that even without words and without assault, the message became glaringly clear, you cannot win. And in the seconds at the end, with Orikimaru holding Kunao on every limb, Naruto thought, 
for a brief moment, that an angel had come. A beacon of bright, warm light came down, slowly, and then faster and faster, approaching, and then consuming Orochimaru in a hellfire. Even when it turned out to be a well-placed cat on jutsu shooting down some ninja wire, Naruto figured it was a savior all the same. Yo, Satsuki said. Naruto looked up at her, skin marred with dirt and hair stuck to his face. Yo, he grinned. Take the U formation, Satsuki said. I'm going first. You know what to do. Naruto winced, but bit his lip. Damn it, Satsuki, I hope you know what you're doing. If you're the one who sent that snake after me, Satsuki said, walking forward and pulling out her fans from her belt, then I'm sure you'll be glad to know that it suffered before I cut it into pieces. You Uchiha are so cocky, Orochimaru said, the smell of burning human flesh getting stronger as she neared him. Even his sclero were red and singed, and peeling away like crumbling paper. Satsuki gritted her teeth. This is so very convenient, Orochimaru said, expression dark. I came here for you, little Uchiha, but I think I may play around with you for a little while longer. You and your team are far more interesting than I thought. Specifically, that boy. Play around, Naruto said angrily. Stop talking shit like we didn't leave a mark on you. People like you just piss me off. Satsuki opened her fans wide and affixed her fingers to their edges before diving forward. Of all things Satsuki had to show for herself, her grace was the one thing that was unprecedented. Her ability to dance about every strong hit of the enemy, and even when hit, to direct damage elsewhere to make the collision non-lethal. But as Satsuki leaned under a sweeping roundhouse kick, she felt herself faced with someone just as, no, more graceful than her, someone faster and stronger than her to boot. Orochimaru leaned back to avoid the edge of her fan, kicking upwards with a force that would have broke her jaw had she not pushed. The kick to the side with the edge of her right tessin fan. He sprang on his hands, no sooner standing than he was running towards her with eyes so intent and filled with evil she sank to her knees right there. Naruto launched in from the left, kunao in hand, and when he tried to make contact, Orochimaru grabbed his fists and threw him to the side. In the opening he left, Satsuki slashed at. Orochimaru's underarm with the tip of her fan, and yet, together with Naruto, Satsuki was not just Grace. Her and Naruto were two parts of the brawn required to make a man perfect, she was the everlasting dance, and he was the force, the punch behind a fist. As Naruto landed on the side of a tree from Orochimaru's throw, he cursed. Tajuya Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Hundreds of Cage Bunshin filled. The trees around them, and Sakura looked at Naruto. They nodded in affirmation, and in the blur of orange, they disappeared. But then, what was Naruto without Sakura? He was a force without direction, which was surely nothing at all. Her whole life, Satsuki had been called genius and prodigy by her teachers, her peers, and her family. But as she watched Orochimaru's movements, swift and strong and perfect, she finally understood what those words really meant. To take down classmates in a single move as a child was impressive. To take on a hundred men with Tejutsu alone was insane. Orochimaru's tongue wrapped around the neck of a cage bunshin, and he flung it against a crowd of orange. As they puffed out of existence, Orochimaru smirked. Kukuku, he snickered, eyeing Sakura's still. Form, expression contorted with strong thought until she eyed Orochimaru's murderous gaze. Why would you leave yourself so open, little girl? In a second that Satsuki couldn't possibly hope to keep up with, Orochimaru withdrew his sword, and extended it instantaneously to pierce through Sakura's throat. The gruesome moment where Satsuki saw the gaping windpipe as it leaked with fresh blood was destroyed by the small puff of smoke as Sakura disappeared. Orochimaru's eyes widened, and Naruto landed a punch on the man's jaw that sent him reeling. Team 7 was like a machine, if they were to be a sword, Satsuki was the slice and Naruto was the swing and Sakura was the consciousness that had mind to move at all, and against an opponent with a careful and perfect balance of genius, grace and power, the three of them finally understood Kakashi's words. Three ninja without teamwork were three ninja, but together they could be something else. Naruto-kun, he said, voice sending shivers up Satsuki's spine, how you surprise me. The next punch Naruto threw was caught by a quick and unmistaken palm. Orochimaru ran for Satsuki. Satsuki bent to avoid his punch, and jumped and spun to avoid his kick, skidding across the unsteady surface of the bark. He launched himself forwards again, 
the force of the punch that Satsuki misfired slamming into the trunk and sending down a soft rain of leaves. Naruto came in from the right, throwing kunao that restricted Orikimaru's movement severely, leaving the man to block Satsuki's incoming fan with his forearm. Orikimaru leg hooked around the back of hers, closing on her knee with a force that made her bones groan under the pressure. Orikimaru spied Naruto coming from his right, and with a painful force, jumped onto his hands, dragging Satsuki up with him, and propelling his legs forwards with a force that sent Satsuki careening into the trunk of the tree. In a single moment, Orikimaru lunged forward, drawing his sword and heading for Satsuki. His mouth was curled up deviously. Now, son of Minato, what will you do? Don't touch her. Naruto's fist and self came hurtling towards Orikimaru, so fast, quick, bound to collide and then his world became a mass of metal clanging, ringing, and dizziness he could not escape, with Satsuki's scream resounding in between. Sakura felt her hair stand on end and her body convulse as Satsuki's pained cry resounded through the trees. The sword, with a sickening severing of muscle, slipped through her arm and pushed through the tree, and with the other hand, Orikimaru had extended his fist with a strong punch and hit Naruto straight in his forehead protector. The collision had sent Naruto reeling, the force of his run and the force of Orikimaru's stasis throwing him off his feet and onto the branch below. Sakura, feeling her heartache as Orikimaru approached Naruto, ran for Satsuki. What a foolish little boy, Orikimaru said. The three of you, even combined, I didn't need a shred of ninjutsu. How weak, pathetic. Naruto was dizzy and unbalanced, but pushed against the surface of the branch to pull himself further away. His eyes were unfocused from the resounding concussion. Through the unrelenting pain of being pinned to a tree by her flesh, Satsuki screamed. Naruto, get up, you loser. Sakura bit her lip so hard a trail of blood leaked down her chin. Satsuki-san, stay still, you'll bleed out. Satsuki reached out to Sakura with her remaining hand, and grabbed the girl by the collar. Get the hell off me and go save him. Sakura's heart pounded in her ears. Satsuki-san, I'm sorry. I'm not as brave as you. Orikimaru leaned down, face close with Naruto's. You say pretty things about protecting people, he said, but in the end, you couldn't save anyone. Not even yourself. Naruto's head reeled, trying to form words but spitting up blood instead. Sakura, if I go anywhere, you'll die, Sakura whispered. I'll die. Sakura dash Sakura put her hands over her ears. I don't want to die here. Sakura screamed. I'm not brave enough to go around saving people like you. I don't want to die here. I don't. I'm not suicidal. If I try to save Naruto, I'll die. No one will save you, and we'll all die here. Satsuki spat in Sakura's face. You're pathetic, Sakura. Satsuki said, voice choking, and face contorted with rage. Naruto would do it for you. She grabbed the sword by its flat edge. Fingers trembling. Orikimaru's lips brushed Naruto's ears. Get off me, Naruto said, voice raspy and the words barely making it past his lips. Orikimaru laughed. Hatred like yours, Orikimaru said, sitting up and grinning widely, I'd hoped that Satsuki-chan would have something like this for me, but you've just turned out to be so promising, Naruto-kun. How could I resist? The sword of Kusanagi clattered to the branch floor and blood spilled anew onto the bark as Satsuki yanked the blade out of her arm and ran. Naruto. With that, Orikimaru's teeth sunk into Naruto's stomach, and his scream sent canopy leaves swaying down to the dark, invisible bottom of the forest floor. Chapter 11 Sakura undid the knot and released the pressure on the wound, and Satsuki hissed, expression. Tense with acute pain. I'm going to pull the last layer off now, Sakura said, looking up at her. Satsuki nodded her knuckles turning white. Sakura peeled the fabric away, and the sight made her stomach turn. She had roughly and tightly wrapped the wound to staunch the blood flow whilst she tried to lay Naruto down, and now as she undid it she regretted her lack of attention. The wound had left. A jagged fleshy outlook from where Satsuki had ripped the sword from her flesh. A thick gunge pushed through the chunks of tissue, platelets, and blood mixing to make uncomfortable pink. From what Sakura could tell, Orikimaru had not intended to kill her. Her arm did not appear broken, and the blood flow was under control. Sakura looked up to Satsuki. The girl was biting her lip, tears pooling in. Her tightly closed eyes. She was shaking. I'm almost done, she said, slowly peeling away the bandage, and Satsuki gasped. It came off slowly, 
Satsuki's breathing heavy as the bandage finally peeled off of her skin, Sakura reached into her bag and brought out a small bottle. This'll sting, she said, and rubbed some alcohol from her pack on the wound. Satsuki visibly winced, but didn't say anything. Sakura unrolled some fresh bandages on the wound, tight but not tight enough to stop blood flow to Satsuki's arm, and tied it roughly. Lie down, Sakura said, and she cleared a space behind the girl, trying to lie her down comfortably next to Naruto. Thank you, Satsuki said, delirious with pain. Satsuki turned her head to Naruto. He was sweating, visibly shaking, eyebrows knotted as, though deep in the throes of an argument. Her expression tightened, and she closed her eyes tightly. God damn it, Naruto, she said. He'll be fine. He's Naruto. He could never be anything else. Sakura nodded, diverting her gaze from Naruto's pained form. Of course, she said, biting her lip. Naruto'll be fine. I won't sleep. The wood was dark, night having settled a choking blanket of sky over Sakura that should have reminded her of the open night beyond. Instead, the darkness enveloped her, every rustling leaf suspicious and every distant figure an enemy. The stronger fear than that was sleep, the sleep that pulled at her eyelids and clouded her senses. Sakura dug her nails into her knees, the pain barely rousing her from an almost slumber. She looked to the side. Naruto lay on one side, Satsuki on the other. Satsuki's arm was wrapped in bandages, fresh white material that she'd replaced just an hour ago stained with a deep red. Sakura was not keen to rewrap her arm, they had limited resources here, with no way to obtain more bandages without ransacking another team's supplies, and Sakura knew there was no chance of that. And the pain. Sakura knew Satsuki to be stubborn, refusing to show emotion or weakness, but when she touched that arm, peeling fresh material from the skin, Satsuki bit her lip to stop from screaming and wept. It shook Sakura. I won't sleep, she said, staring at Naruto's pained form. I won't sleep. He was no better, but there was something horribly, horribly eerie about it. Naruto was not gravely injured, or didn't appear so, all there was. Was a strange pattern seal on his stomach, three tomo on top of a swirl, glowing bright as though it were red hot. And his expression was disturbed, as though trapped in a fitful nightmare. Her voice quivered in her mantra. I won't sleep. The underbrush rustled, and Sakura flinched. A face of a man attached to the squirming body of a snake crept from the undergrowth and let a slick tongue trace its lips. Its voice sent shivers down Sakura's spine. Won't you, Sakura? She was awoken by her own cry of fear. The night moved, and Sakura's heartbeat rang in her ears. Who's there? The world was empty. It wasn't. Naruto was in fact, surrounded by people, with faces contorted by prejudice and hatred. It felt the same as being alone. He would have preferred it. But in the distance, he could make someone else out. Someone distinct from the vaguely similar and hateful faces. I hate it. Naruto blinked, looking to make out the figure. It was him. A younger him, at that, in a top and shorts with his hands clutched to his face. Tears dripped down, and Naruto, even from this distance, could hear the hitch of his breathing as he cried. The distance between them somehow grew smaller. And Naruto could see the younger boy with greater clarity. I hate it, the boy said again, voice a distraught whisper. I hate being on my own. Naruto tried to speak, but found himself voiceless. The boy sank to his knees. What did I ever do, the boy said, his tone rising with hysteria and distress. I've never hurt anyone. The hateful whispers around them grew, the insults and jibes barely recognizable, but the disgust in their tones clear. The boy scrubbed at his eyes with the back of his hands, and his tone grew quiet. Hand over your scroll, the girl said, voice cold and expression colder. Sakura flinched, knees shaking as she stood before Naruto and Satsuki resting forms. The hand that held the kunao in front of her was trembling. If I don't stand up here, then, are you deaf, she said sneeringly, stepping forward with her hands outstretched. She spoke demandingly. Hand over the scroll, you stupid girl. Sakura, moving her head mere inches, looked at Satsuki's pained expression. Her voice rang out fresh in her head. You hit hard. Let's go again. Sakura dug the balls of her feet into the dirt, and smirked. Come get it, then, you bitch. I've never had anyone, the boy said. I've never had parents. I've never had friends. I've always been alone. In a near instant, the boy before him grew older, childhood fat thinning out to leave a thinner boy clad in an orange jumpsuit. His expression was bitter, 
I had nothing to do with the Cubai inside of me, he said, voice low. I was hated for something that wasn't my fault. Labeled as the demon. Inside of me, wouldn't a real demon just kill them all? A real demon wouldn't have let them isolate me all those years, a real demon wouldn't have let them do what they did to me. The boy reached up to his jaw and dug his nails into his flesh, peeling away the flesh of his jaw and then his lips to reveal a snake-like tongue and grin as he smiled. Let's show them what a real demon does. Naruto stepped back, horrified and defiant. Did Auntie say shit like that with my face? I'd never think anything like that. I've never wanted to hurt the villagers for what they've done to me dash. Mizuki Sensei. Naruto stiffened. Mizuki Sensei was a traitor to your village, the very same village that killed him for trying to help you. The only man to ever care for you, it's hard to call him traitor, isn't it? Naruto's blood ran cold. Who is this guy? I want to leave Kanaha. I want revenge on the people who took Mizuki Sensei from me. I want to be powerful. I want people to fear me and respect me, the imposter before him said with a smirk of satisfaction on his lips. His tongue enunciated every word with a tone dripping with arrogant pride. Naruto's lips trembled, stuttering angrily with words he couldn't even find. The boy before him chuckled darkly. Those are your true thoughts, aren't they? S shut up. Naruto said, gritting his teeth and advancing upon the boy with fists clenched. Lying like that, putting words in my mouth, you piss me off. Oddly, the closer he attempted to walk, the further the boy appeared. I know full well you aren't so disillusioned that you could ever truly lie to yourself. You may. Behind a smile of lies, but you know I'm speaking the truth. The pseudo Naruto smiled widely, with eyes that sparkled gleefully. Naruto-kun. Orikimura has a gift for us. Power. I don't want anything like that, he said, trembling. I don't want power, and especially not from you. A traitor in the eyes of your village, and he was killed for his crimes, the boy continued. Naruto could only describe the tone as parasitic in its timber. But the tale doesn't go quite like that for you, now, does it? He could have escaped, but he lost his life begging you to come with him. He lost his life trying to bring you to a better life. SH shut up? Those, that's not what I dash. He was a traitor, certainly, the young boy said, slippery and smooth. But can he ever be just a traitor to you? He was the only one who told you the truth. The only one who tried to help you. Your only friend. I have friends now, Naruto said. I don't need power. I don't need anything like that. And especially not from scum like Orikimura. The young boy before him laughed. The noise was sickening in its delirium and hysteria, before it simmered down to leave only a smirk. Oh, he said, voice sliding past. Naruto's eardrums, but he's powerful. Power takes, power gives, and power reigns. And power, as you will soon learn, is a very, very intoxicating thing. Naruto-kun. Sakura moved her eyes to Rock Lee's unconscious form, and her chest tightened. Even he, with that move, even he's down. What chance do I really have against these guys? A forceful yank of her hair from behind sent waves of pain. Through Sakura's scalp, and she looked behind her with a snarl of anger to see the girl of the team with her hands firmly tangled in Sakura's hair and her face bearing an unkind smile. You seem so proud of this hair of yours, she sneered, ragging it closer to her. Akunoichi shouldn't spend so much time on her looks. Satsuki-san thinks long hair is pretty. Sakura could see Naruto and Satsuki from where she was knelt, pained in their expressions. God, all I've been doing all this time, just watching their back, or standing at the sidelines. Thinking, Satsuki is so strong? Or, maybe Naruto's not as much of an idiot as I'd thought, when I don't have the right to say anything until I stand up on my own. No wonder you're such a failure, Kin said, her laugh malicious, and Sakura. Closed her eyes. Satsuki. Naruto. I'm sorry. I've been such a useless team made up until now. She reached into her pocket slowly, drawing out a kunao imperceptibly and strengthening her grip on its handle. I won't just stand and watch your backs anymore. Maybe, Sakura said, teeth gritted, you should stop underestimating me. When Kin went flying backwards, hands filled with tresses of pink hair, Sakura felt that in the truest sense of the word, a weight had been lifted. The clearing burst with blood-red chakra, and the enemy and Sakura's allies alike flinched in fear. Sakura became wide-eyed. This chakra? The intent to kill is so strong, who could this possibly? Sakura. The air stilled, and though Sakura recognized the voice well, her blood ran cold. 
Her head turned. Naruto stood in the clearing, a red-hot pattern of wave-like swirls stretching up the jutting shapes of his collarbone and encroaching onto his jaw, burning waves licking up to touch Naruto's unnatural grin. They turned black, as though cooled. Naruto, she whispered, knuckles widening. God, no, this can't be him. Not with Chakra like this. Sakura, he said again, and his voice was unmistakable. Are you hurt? Sakura couldn't force words past her throat, and the whole clearing, enemy and ally alike, was still. He's alive, Zuka whispered, voice stricken with shock. How the fuck did he? Naruto moved a step closer. Sakura, he said again, and his voice sent chills down Sakura's back. You're hurt, aren't you? When he moved again, Sakura resisted the urge to up and run under his hungry regard. Naruto looked her dead in the eyes, and her stomach turned. Who did this to you? His eyes were blood red, and slit like a feline. I did, sneered Zuku. Naruto's regard snapped from Sakura's to Zuku's, and Sakura, for the smallest moment, felt an ounce of sympathy for the sound ninja, because whatever look Zuku received, made him stop in his tracks and freeze in fear. In a moment, Sakura couldn't possibly hope to keep up with, Naruto was driving his knee into Zuku's gut and sending him careening into a tree back first, then grabbing him by his collar and lashing him onto the ground. Naruto pressed his foot into the center of Zuku's ribs, and the boy coughed blood, scrabbling with his hands at Naruto's ankles frantically. His breath was heaving. You seem so proud of yourself, Naruto noted absent-mindedly, yelling about what you've done. He reached down, grabbing Zuku's hands and pinning them above his head. As Naruto took his foot off his chest, Zuku heaved for breath, gasping in grateful gulps of air, before he screamed them out of his lungs seconds later as Naruto crushed his fingers with the very same foot. Naruto reached down, smile unpleasant as he hooked two fingers onto Zuku's lower teeth and used his other hand to push against the top half of Zuku's mouth. The boy began writhing, screaming Zuku's jaw snapped, and his shriek of agony made Sakura choke back a scream of fear, squeezing her eyes shut. No way, she whispered to herself. No way is this Naruto. Naruto turned to the young sound ninja quivering against the trunk of a tree, and pinned her down with his gaze. You're next. Kin let out a small scream, scrambling to escape when Naruto grabbed her by both shoulders and slammed her against the bark. Sakura watched, morbidly fascinated as she began to shake her head. That smile, that cruelty. She thought, trembling, is nothing like Naruto. Long hair, Naruto mused. Funny, what happened to Sakura's? Kin was whimpering in his grip as Naruto grabbed a fistful of her hair, and she began crying out and begging. I didn't she did it. I didn't cut it off. I didn't do it. I didn't. Oh God please let go dash Naruto laughed, and placed his foot on her shoulder. An eye for an eye. He began to pull her by her hair, the roots ripping out clumps of skin and leaving fresh red blood to stream down her head in. Rivulets. Her scream pushed Sakura over the edge, and she stumbled to her feet with tears in her eyes. Stop. Sakura cracked him in the side of the jaw, and he tumbled to the ground, kin scrambling from his grip to her teammate Doso. He turned towards her, with a shocked glint in his eye and blood on his lip, and she looked back at him with eyes filled with desperation. Please, she said, choking on her words. Just stop it. With unbidden relief, Sakura watched as the seal that had consumed him receded and disappeared like globules of red-hot lava trailing down his neck. He fell to his knees, unmoving and blank in his stare. The ninja doso looked at them both with an expression that told of fear, and lay down their scroll with shaking fingers. Please, please take this scroll. Spare our lives, and you won't see us again. You're too strong. Neither of them responded, and doso held Kin supportively, who was choking back screams of agony and moved to open-mouthed, swinging Jodzuko, who was doing the same, and ran. Naruto looked down to his orange jacket, dyed red in splashes, and his hands found his way to the wet patches. His fingers quivered against the bloodstained zip of his jacket. This blood, he said. I'm not hurt anywhere. Sakura fell to her knees and wrapped her arms around Naruto, burying her head in his shoulder and trembling with the onslaught of tears. Her breathing hitched, and she spoke in a whisper, I know. Chapter 12 Satsuki awoke to the overpowering stench of wildlife that masked the faintest scent of ramen. Her second intake of breath was stained with the scent of miso. She opened her eyes, blinking out the blurred vision and wincing at the bright orange fabric her face was currently buried in. You awake, bastard. She yawned, 
The tight knot of sleepiness strong and alluring in her chest. That was Naruto's voice, she noted, and then she realized her legs were in his arms, her arms slung over his shoulders. He was carrying her, and she frowned. Yujure Tonkeki, she said. I can walk. I'm not taking any chances with that wound of yours, Satsuki-san, Sakura intercepted from their right firmly. The river isn't far now, see. Satsuki followed her pointing finger to a faintly glimmering strip of water in the distance, flashing amongst the moving trees. Provided there are no enemies there, we'll get you. Cleaned up, we'll fill up our canteens, and we'll get washed, Sakura said. Hell yeah, Naruto said, and although Satsuki couldn't see his grin, she rolled her eyes anyway. I'm so oh, oh, oh thirsty, you know, Sakura-chan. I forgot to even fill up my canteen. You're such an idiot, sometimes, Naruto, Sakura said, rolling her eyes. Either way, we're nearly there, Satsuki-san. Her expression turned. Somewhat worrisome. But you know what they say about water. Naruto blinked. No, that's where the animals gather to drink. Satsuki could feel the shudder of Naruto's nervous gulp from on his back. L like, those animals? The huge ones? They're gonna be there dash. Satsuki slapped a hand to Naruto's mouth. Idiot, she said quietly, eyes flitting to the forest around them. You're too loud. Come on, we're here, Sakura said, landing on a branch, and... Satsuki noticed Naruto's particularly long evaluation of the area before he dropped down to the grass besides the river. Satsuki climbed off his back with as much dignity as she could muster, which wasn't much. You know, I totally expected you to weigh like, a million tons, Naruto said, cracking his back. But I could barely tell you were there. But that's probably just because I'm super strong. Satsuki flicked him in the side of the head. Hurry up, Naruto huffed rubbing his temple and walking to the side of the river. Still a bastard. They settled down for a moment, Sakura having already filled up her canteen and taken off her shoes. She stood in the river, and sighed happily, reaching down to cup her hands with the fresh water to drink and wash away the smudges of dirt and blood on her face. Naruto caught himself staring at her happy smile, and quickly dragged his gaze away, undoing his jacket and taking off the top underneath. Satsuki eyed him cautiously. What are you doing? Duh, I'm washing. I stink. So do you? Satsuki blinked, before shrugging and reaching for the hem of her top. Stop stop stop. They both looked up, to see Sakura looking horrified. Satsuki-san, she said, eyes silently urging Satsuki, but the girl just raised an eyebrow. What? Sakura pointed at Naruto, looking at Satsuki as though she was meant to be in on something, but the Uchiha found herself yet still bewildered. Satsuki-san, he's a guy, she said. Satsuki rolled her eyes. I was aware, Sakura. So, so what are you doing? You can't just get undressed in front of a guy. Why? Satsuki said. I don't know if you've noticed Sakura, but you said we didn't have much time here. Sakura looked back and forth from Satsuki and Naruto, her expression incredulous. I, we're girls? He's a guy. With an exasperated look, Sakura turned on Naruto with her arms folded and her expression stern. Leave. What? But I haven't done anything, and I need to get dash you can get washed when. We're done, Sakura said, her tone leaving no room for argument. Now go, and no peeking. But I dash Sakura shot him a look, and Naruto turned and walked to the outskirts of the trees. Satsuki rolled her eyes, and lifted her top off, kicking off her shoes and pulling off her shorts before climbing into the river. Sakura looked away, somewhat embarrassed at her own shyness, before pulling off her dress and the short leggings underneath. Satsuki cleaned herself, unwrapping her chest to wash properly beneath, and Sakura noted that she was as flat-chested as ever, thin and elegant and slightly muscled. Sakura. Ah, uh, Sakura said, blinking herself out of her stupor and blushing profusely. You um, what? Satsuki hauled herself onto the riverbank, leaning over to douse her hair with fresh, Sparkling water and running her fingers through the thick black hair, she leaned up to look at Sakura. You're not a coward, she said, twisting water from her hair. Sakura blinked, before leaning over to douse her hair in the water as well. It was shorter now, and the jagged ends brought back moments of horror. Satsuki's hair was much longer than hers, now. I am, Sakura said, scooping up. Handfuls of water to rub into her scalp. The water stung and soothed it simultaneously. Satsuki looked at her with an unreadable expression as she stood up and climbed out of the river, 
grabbing her clothes. Sakura couldn't help but admire the sheen of her white flesh against the grime of the forest. I'd say you're more of a leader, she said, pulling on her shorts. She held a hand out to Sakura. So is that an apology then? Sakura said, smiling cheekily. Satsuki's eyebrow twitched. The girl knee-deep in the river smiled a little, taking Satsuki's outstretched hand before she decided to retract it and climbing onto the riverbank. Are you two done yet? No? And you'd better not be peeking. Naruto ended up getting washed in the river whilst the other two planned, apparently it was acceptable for a boy to be in his shorts in front of girls, but not the other way around. Satsuki took note, and questioned Sakura, but her response was simply well, I mean, guys are always topless, right? So, we have both scrolls, Sakura said, patting her back, the last team we fought left us the scroll of heaven to match our scroll of earth. Satsuki frowned. You did that on your own, she asked. Or was that when Naruto woke up? I was going to die for sure before Naruto woke up, Sakura said, and her tone changed. But I can't say for sure whether it was truly him that beat them. What do you mean by that? Satsuki said, her voice low and demanding, and Sakura held herself back from babbling nonsense as she might have done weeks ago. When he woke up, he was so much stronger. Then the sound ninja, Sakura said, her voice shaking. He tortured them for hurting me, and his body was covered with a horrible black pattern. He felt nothing like Naruto, he felt terrifying. They left us their scroll in return for mercy. At that point, I'd managed to calm him down, but... Satsuki's expression betrayed little, but her white knuckles and tense shoulders read of rage. That mark that Orikimaru left on his stomach. A fair few meters to their side, Naruto bathed, water washing away stains of blood to leave fresh healed skin behind. He scrubbed it from beneath his nails, and crusted away the dried flakes of it from his palms. The feeling of dirtiness never left him, but he took it upon himself to quickly wash his jacket. The blood stains took a fair bit of rubbing and scratching to remove, but he'd rather the aching fingertips than Satsuki's searching gaze. He wrung out the material, and hung it on a nearby branch. Satsuki and Sakura's conversation was as distant as the world around them. Catch fish? But we don't have anything to catch them with. Improvise? That's how you became a ninja, right? Naruto physically recoiled from the comment. Well, Sakura-chan, you're so mean. The tower is just over there, Satsuki said. We should be able to make it there by tomorrow at least. That's pretty fast, Sakura said. Maybe there won't be many teams there, hopefully we won't get into a fight on the way. As long as we're quiet, there shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to take the first night shift, Sakura said. Naruto, I want the big fish, he blurted out, and the two looked at him with raised eyebrows. What? The fish, he said, eyeing the three fish impaled over the flames. I want the big one. Sakura sighed. Three sets of bones picked dry lay beside charred wood and stirring embers, curling rib cages still warm and chipped by keen teeth. Sakura had been put to bed by a firm Satsuki, who had insisted on taking the first watch of the night, and Sakura had put up little of a fight and had passed out in seconds on her bedroll with her legs sprawled and hair in her mouth. Naruto was lying down, close to the fire, fingers outstretched to the flames and eyes blank. Satsuki had moved, legs crossed beside the fire, stoking the embers with a stick and a kunao hanging heavily on the fingers of her other hand. Sorry, Naruto said suddenly, and Satsuki turned to him. His eyes were focused on the center of the flames, and his irises lit up with strong orange life. His face was looking so much more weary recently. Although Satsuki liked to think that Naruto was invincible in his resilience, day by day his mortality was painted out to her in blood-stained letters, the mortality of his body and the mortality of his mind. For what? She asked, and he closed his eyes and leaned back with a smile that read of a different boy. For letting you get hurt like that, he said. It's my fault. Of course it's not, Satsuki snapped back at him, and he opened his eyes to look at her. She glared. It's nothing to do with you, and I definitely don't need you taking care of me. You can barely manage. Yourself. Naruto looked at her. The fire crackled like twigs snapping underfoot. I suppose, he said with that same smile. Maybe it's your fault for being such a loser then. Like you can talk, dead last, she said dryly, and Naruto stuck his tongue out. Bastard, he said. He curled his index finger into the curve up to his thumb, peering through the tiny hole up to the stars peering through. The canopy. 
Satsuki couldn't help but looking up. The stars, distant from the light of the village, were bright and windingly dense with the stripes of cloudy white space. She wondered what Naruto saw. He unwound his fingers, lifting his hand in front of his face and puppeting with the shadows. Well then, it's your responsibility to not get hurt, he said. So don't. Why can't Naruto just be? Naruto, why do I have to care that he's not all he appears, she thought. Satsuki knew why. It had started the day he had overturned her expectations by tending to her houseplant, and the end was nowhere in sight. Why do I want to know about him so badly? What about you? She said. What's with that mark Orikimaru left on you? His fingers twitched, and froze in front of his face. It's fine. Satsuki lifted the thick stick to stoke the fire. Scraps of ash flittered upwards and sizzled into dust. It's not. You always say that. It's not fine. You're not fine. It's your responsibility to not get hurt, she said, looking at him intently, and he chuckled, the sound genuine and soothing in her ears. He leaned back, grinning cockily. Right. Or what? She snorted. I'll beat the shit out of you. Naruto laughed loudly, and Sats- Chapter 9 Satsuki walked slowly, tucking the paper into her pocket.